Now I want to look at collisions in one dimension that are elastic. In that case, they conserve momentum in both energy, both energy and momentum. Okay, so again, we're going to have two masses. Uh, mass 1 that has some initial velocity, V1, and some mass 2 that has some initial velocity, V2. And so since V2i, and since this is one dimensional, we're not going to use the vector notation, but we have to remember that these are vectors. The number is its magnitude and its uh, sign, plus or minus, gives us the direction that it's pointing, positive or negative x axis. And so, for example, we always want to make sure we define our x axis when we do our problems. Okay, so in this case, we know that momentum is energy momentum and energy are conserved so we can use that to come up with our relationships between the final velocity of 1 and 2 um in terms of the initial velocities okay so momentum says that our initial momentum which <laughs> the mass of 1 times the v1 initial plus the mass of 2 v2 initial is equal to the mass of 1 times the final velocity of 1 plus the mass of 2 times the final velocity of 2. So that's this just momentum conservation. Our initial momentum, mv of both objects, is equal to our final momentum, uh, mass times velocity of both objects. Okay, so we also have this momentum. All right, so we ha also have energy conservation. And energy conservation says that the mass of 1 times the initial velocity of 1 squared plus the mass of 2 times the initial velocity of 2 squared is equal to the mass of 1 times the final velocity of 1 squared plus the mass of 2 times the velocity of 2, uh, the final velocity of 2 squared. So this is energy. So again, uh, I'm in one dimension where the the something is sliding or gravity is negligible, so I don't have any um, uh, uh, gravitational forces or spring forces that give me potential energies at the end of the collision. So that's an important distinction. Remember when we talked about the introduction to collisions, we noted that there was a before which is here, where there's only kinetic energy. And there's an after, which is here, where there's only kinetic energy. But there's also a during, where the, the objects are in fact colliding and they're exerting forces on each other. If those forces are conservative, then there can also be potential energies being stored during the collision uh, internally within the system. But we don't care about what's going on during the collision at this time. We want to know, we want to be able to relate the velocities after the collision to the velocities before the collision. And in, tho in those two times, before and after, we don't have any potential energies, we just have kinetic. Okay, so now we have the straightforward task of, we have two, essentially two equations and two unknowns, our uh, final velocity of one and two. But, um, it shouldn't take too much to convince you that this is really um, an unpleasant and uninteresting amount of algebra. How you do this is you first solve this equation for, say, v1. Then you square it into some monstrosity and substitute that into here. And then rearrange all of the terms uh, to solve for v the v2 final in terms of the initial velocities and all of the mass terms. Now, and I could do a, a write-up that brings all those steps, but but there isn't really any interesting physics involved in um, a page or two of really quite unpleasant algebra. And so let's go to the uh, solution directly. So we find, after all of that, that our final velocity of mass 2 is equal to 2m1 over m2 plus m1 v1 initial plus m2 minus m1 over m2 plus m1 v2 initial. So this is our the, the final velocity of mass 
of, of mass 2 in terms of the initial velocities, and each one has a coefficient that's a function of the both masses. So we can find a similar equation for the first mass, and you'll see it's quite symmetric. It's equal to mass 1 minus mass 2 over the sums of the masses, m1 plus m2, v1 initial, plus then 2m2 over m1 plus m2, v2 initial. So you can see that these two terms are similar and, and these two terms are similar. Okay, so this now gives us our uh, final velocities in terms of our initial velocities. And of course, if we we're given the final velocities, then we could calculate the initial velocities from this as well. And so this is now general for any elastic collision between two objects in one dimension. And so we don't have to go back and reproduce, do all this algebra again. We can go uh, straight to here. So let's take a look at this. Uh, note that one interesting thing is that, that if m1 is equal to m2, then um, th this term is 0, and this term is 1, and this term is 0, and this term is 1. And so you just get 2m over 2m, it all cancels. So if m1 is equal to m2, you get the interesting condition that two, the velocity of mass 2 final is equal to the velocity of 1 initial. And the velocity of one final is equal to the velocity of two initial. So under the condition of elastic collisions, where the masses are equal, then the masses simply trade velocities. And remember, these are vectors, so there may be minus signs involved here too. And so that's a, a useful result to keep in mind. All right, so let's do a, a quick example for elastic collisions. We're, we're going to use the same example I did for the totally inelastic before. I have some mass of, of 4 uh, kilograms going at 6 meters per second, and I have a mass of 5 kilograms going at 8 meters per second, and they're going towards each other. Going towards each other means I have to worry about uh, minus signs in my coordinate system. Well, I always have to do that. Let me establish positive x off to the right. That means the 6 is going to be a, the vector is going to be positive 6 meters per second. The velocity here will be negative 8 meters per second because it's going in the negative x direction. Okay. Well, now I can just go ahead and, and use these, and, and I have all the information, and I can calculate my final velocities. All right. So my final Let's go here. My final velocity of 1 is equal to, let's see, difference uh, m1 minus m2. So that's 4 minus 5 over the sums of the masses. That's 9 times the initial velocity of 1. That was 6. So this is plus uh, 2 times mass 2. So that's 2 times 5 over the sums of the masses, which is 9 times a velocity of 2, which is negative 8 in this coordinate system. So you can see where that minus sign is important. Okay, so this is equal to uh, minus 6 ninths minus, this is 80 ninths, it looks like. So at minus 86 ninths, which is approximately minus 9.6 meters per second. So Interestingly, after the collision, then, mass 1 is going in the negative x direction. It rebounds off the first, and it has a, uh, a speed higher than either of the speeds before. So it comes in and rebounds at a, at a higher velocity, a higher speed, in the negative x direction. So that's kind of interesting. All right, so now... V2 final is equal to uh, twice the mass of 1, which is 4, over the sums of the masses, which is 9, times the initial velocity of 1, which is 6, plus the difference in masses. This is m2 minus m1, which is 1, 5 minus 4, divided by the total mass, which is 9, times the velocity of mass 2, which is negative 8. So this is, uh, let's call that... Uh, 48 ninths, positive 48 ninths is the first term. Minus 8 ninths is equal to 
40 ninths or approximately 4.4 meters per second. So the, the larger mass rebounds. It's now traveling in the positive x direction at a lower speed than either particle had initially, while the lighter mass rebounded with a larger speed than either of the masses had initially. And so that's kind of an uh, interesting effect as well. The total kinetic energy was conserved and total momentum conserved that was given to us in the beginning. And so this highlights kind of a an important aspect, which is if you're looking at a particular class of problems, in this case one dimension, elastic, um, you often don't want to go to your fundamental relationships every time, because then you have to do all this messy algebra every time you solve a problem. And so if you can solve it in general once and get yourself a set of, say, master equations for that particular class of problems, as long as you always remember the class of problems you're referring to, one-dimensional, this is elastic, which means momentum, I'll give me momentum, energy conserved, then you can go to your master equations to solve the problem directly.